Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the House of Law, and I'm Attorney Al Jumrani. So for today's video, I'm starting a new lecture series, and it's property law. There are 10 topics under property law, namely general characteristics, ownership, hidden treasures, accession, co-ownership, possession, use of rock, easements and servitudes, nuisance, and donations. Yes, 10 topics under property law. Now, if you're a law student or a bar examinee, ask yourself, I know, ready ka na ba? Have you learned all these subjects or all these topics under property law? Hmm. Well, if you have, good for you. Pero pag sa tingin mo kulang ka pa, well, my commitment is I will cover the basics and discuss some of the relevant cases. And hopefully, these videos will help you understand better the law on property and Hopefully, you know, help you ace those exams, whether in law school or in this bar exam this coming November 2021. All right. So since this, is the f since this is the first video, we'll start with the beginning. We'll start with general concepts or general characteristics. So are you ready? Good, because I am. So let's begin. What is property? Article 414 of the Civil Code gives us a definition of property and it is a thing which is or may be the object of appropriation. Appropriation or to appropriate means to make one's own. In other words, a property is a thing that can be owned, whether it is open to public ownership or private ownership or whether the thing has no known owner but if it is capable of being owned, then that thing is property. Now, in addition, authors and commentators on the subject also provide three important characteristics to identify or to say that a thing is a property. And these characteristics are utility, substantivity, and appropriability. Utility is the ability to serve as a means to satisfy human wants. So property ideally is something that is used by a human being or a person in order to serve some want or need. Okay, I say want or need because property need not be or the purpose of the property need not be essential. So even if it's non-essential, but if it serves a purpose, then it is or it will meet the uh, requirement of utility. Now, substantivity. Substantivity means that it exists independently of other things. In other words, it can be segregated from its class or it can be separated from other things. Now, if the thing is uh, integrated or incorporated into something and that if it is removed from that other thing, either one or both of them will, 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 will cease to serve uh, their purpose, then it doesn't meet the requirement of substantivity. So, when you say substantivity, it must be substantive. It is a, it has substance and that it is independent of other things. Okay, next, appropriability. Appropriability is that characteristic which states that it can be the object of a juridical relationship. Now, we said that property is open to ownership, but when you say appropriability, it's not limited to ownership. So a property can still be appropriable if it can be the subject of relations or transactions which involve l something less of ownership. For example, mere possession. So if uh, the contract is uh, commodatum, lease, deposit, usufruct, then the uh, property right involved is merely possession or use or enjoyment of the thing or its fruits rather than ownership. So that is the idea of appropriability. It's not limited to absolute ownership. All right, so having said that, based on these characteristics are the following considered property. So you find, uh, or you're seeing now on your screen, uh, five, okay, five things. And we'll see if they meet the characteristics of utility, substantivity, and appropriability. And if they do meet all three, then it is a property, but if they don't meet all three, then it's not considered property based on these three 
important characteristics. So let's start with the house. So a house definitely meets the requirement of utility because what it serves uh, as a shelter. Now also it's substantive or it meets the requirement of substantivity because it can be independent of others and it can be segregated from other houses. Okay, and uh, appropriability because it can be the subject of juridical relations. A house can be owned, a house can be leased, a house can be uh, mortgaged. Okay, so since all three requisites or characteristics are met, then definitely a house is a property. Now, a car is also the same because the difference only is that uh, a car is a movable property or a house is immovable, but just the same. What uh, possibly uh, be the purpose for which a person would acquire or get a car. Of course, it's for transportation, it's for mobility, or maybe it's just for souvenir, right? So it serves a certain purpose. Whether it's essential or not, it still meets the characteristic of utility. Now, is it substantive? Does it meet the requirements of substantivity? Yes, because it can be segregated from its class. It can be independent of other things. Because it is independent and it can serve um, its own independent <clears throat> purpose. Now, next is appropriability. Yes, a car can be sold, can be leased, and even mortgaged. So clearly, a car is a property. Now, how about paint on a painting? Okay. Now, it has utility because it adds beauty. It adds to the creativity of the painting. But is it substantive? Does it meet the requirement of substantivity? Here, it doesn't meet the requirement of substantivity because it cannot be segregated from the painting to which it is attached. Following the principle of the accessory follows the principle. Okay, so it's not independent of the painting. It cannot be independent of the painting. That's why it doesn't meet the requirement of substantivity. Now, appropriability, can it be the subject of... Um, uh, juridical relations. Well, it cannot be the subject of juridical relations unless and uh, until uh, the main painting or the principal painting is also the subject of that juridical relation. You cannot sell the paint independently from the painting. So the painting must be sold because that's the principal thing. So the paint it cannot be the subject or it is not possible to sell it separately from the painting. So that's why the paint on a painting is not a property. Now, lastly, Lugao. Okay? So, <laughs> is Lugao a property? Well, it serves a purpose, okay, whether it is uh, to keep you up at night or maybe it's your breakfast, but it's food. So therefore, it has utility. Now, is it substantive? Does it meet the requirement of substantivity? Yes, it does meet the requirement of substantivity because it can be independent of other things. It can be segregated from its class. Now, appropriability, of course. Okay, logo can be sold, can be uh, donated, can be given away, and of course, it can be eaten. So, yan po ang logo. So, it is property. All right. Now, let's look at right of property i mean is it a right is it a duty what what does it uh, connote i mean at least no, in 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 uh, in the legal landscape so what is property well the right to property is a constitutionally protected right article 3 section 1 of the constitution states that no person shall be deprived of life liberty or property without due process of law okay so clearly uh, owning property uh, use and enjoyment of property that is protected by law. Now, of course, uh, we will not be discussing the limitations or uh, the restrictions on property because uh, like all rights, okay, every right is subject to limitations. Was it not uh, a politician who said that your right ends when the other people's rights begin? Well, that is true. There is truth to that now. But again, as I said, it's not human rights class, so let's not discuss that. But uh, we will now look at property and what's the classification of property. So property may be classified as follows. A property can be classified as immovable or movable. 
it can be classified as tangible or intangible, consumable or non-consumable, fungible or non-fungible, property of the public dominion or property of private ownership, or res nullius and res communis. Okay, so there are so many <laughs> classifications of property out there. Okay, but uh, we'll try to, of course, uh, define each and understand each. But take note that of these class classes or kinds of properties, of course, the most important is the classification of property into immovable and movable. Okay. Now, of course, some of these classifications are important for other laws. For example, consumable, non-consumable, fungible, and non-fungible classifications are important in the law on loans. Okay? But uh, you have to watch my video on loans to understand when or in what type of loan are consumable goods involved or non-consumable goods in are involved. All right? So let's now look at these uh, classifications individually. All right. So tangible property is anything that can be touched and includes both real property and personal property. Of course, uh, it's not just to touch, but also usually to see and to, to be able to feel okay, the, the thing. So that is called in, uh, that is called tangible property. Now, Intangible property is anything that has no physical substance, such as statutory creations like copyright, trademarks, patents, and rights. Okay, now they can relate to or they can be in connection with tangible property like rights to a house. Okay, but if what is sold are the rights, then it involves the sale of intangible property. Okay, not the house because otherwise if uh, what is sold is the house and all the rights included or related to that house then the subject of the sale would be the house but if the contract simply involves the sale or assignment of rights then it is a sale of intangible or also what we call incorporeal rights all right now the next classification is consumable thing and a consumable thing is a thing that cannot be used in a manner appropriate to its nature without being consumed or without being confused. Yes, this definition is very confusing. It simply means that the purpose of its being is to be consumed or its very nature is for it to be consumed. Okay, that's it. Now, a non-consumable thing, on the other hand, is another confusing definition. So it is a thing that can be used in a manner appropriate to its nature without it being consumed. Okay. In other words, okay, its nature is not to be consumed. Okay. Simple as that. Okay. Now, how about a fungible thing? A fungible thing is one where the parties have agreed to allow the substitution of the thing given or delivered with an equivalent thing. Okay. Um, that's why in a contract of mutuum or simple loan, the object of the contract is a fungible thing because the contract allows the replacement or substitution of the thing loaned or borrowed. Okay. Now, a non-fungible thing is one where the parties have the intention of having the same identical thing returned after the intended use. In other words, uh, the purpose is not to replace it, but to return the exact or the same thing. And a non-fungible thing would be a better or a more appropriate subject or object of a contract of commodatum. Okay? Because in commodatum, the bailey or the person who receives the thing has the obligation to return the same thing. But in a simple loan or mutuum, the bailey or the person who, who receives the thing has the obligation only to replace or to substitute it with a thing of the same kind, quality, and quantity. Okay, so fungible thing is uh, usually the topic or the subject of a simple loan or mutuum, but a non-fungible thing is something that is more appropriate for a commodato. All right.
Now, as I've said, the important classifications are immovable properties and movable properties. So what are immovable properties? Now, Article 415 gives us the uh, different types of different examples. I say different examples because the list there in Article 415 is not exhaustive. It's not exclusive, but uh, rather they are mere examples. Now, to better know if a property is real or immovable, it's best to group them according to nature, destination, incorporation, and analogy. In other words, a thing or a property may be considered immovable if it is immovable by nature. And in that list, under Article 415, you have paragraph 1 and 8 as immovables by nature. And these are the lands, the buildings, roads, constructions of all kinds adhered to the soil. Okay, so anything that is adhered to the soil by nature, then these are immovable properties. Also, we have mines, quarries, and slug dumps, while the matter thereof forms part of the bed and water is either running or stagnant. So these are also immovable property by nature. Okay, now we also have immovable properties by destination, okay, or I would call it by intention. So these are the properties listed under paragraph 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9 of Article 415 of the Civil Code. And these are the statues, reliefs, paintings, or other objects for use or ornamentation placed in buildings or on lands owned by the owner of the immovable in such manner that it reveals the intention to attach them permanently to the tenement. Ooh, this is a very, very good source of question. Do you know why? Because the first thing that comes to mind is what if the statue is placed by a mere lessee? Or what if the owner uh, places it without the intention of attaching it to the tenement permanently? Sarap ng tanong na to. Okay, anyway. So let's now go to the next question or the next uh, uh, classification or next list, next in the list. And these are your machinery, receptacles, instruments or implements intended by the owner of the tenement. Again, owner of the tenement for an industry or works which may be carried on in a building or on a piece of land and which tend directly to meet the needs of the said industry or works. Okay, so again, this is immovable by destination or intention okay uh, another type of immovable under uh, immovable by destination are the animal houses pigeon houses beehives fish ponds or breeding places of similar nature in case their owner has placed them permanently attached to the land and forming a permanent part of it the animals in these places are included okay now also fertilizer actually used on a piece of land Mm, ganda na naman tanong to. Okay. What if yung fertilizer nasa sako pa at hindi pa hinahagis at dinidistribute sa mga ayuda, ay, sa, mga, sa mga halaman? Okay. Well, obviously, kapag hindi pa siya naka, uh, nagamit okay, sa lupa, that means movable property pa siya, personal property. Ayan. So take note of those words, no? those those qualifications. So fertilizer is actually used on a piece of land. Okay, sorry, I can't help it. Every time I see something that could, you know, um, uh, be a good question, I can't help it but, but point it out to you. So take note. All right, now, docks and structures which, though floating, are intended by their nature and object to remain at a fixed place on a river, lake, or coast. Obviously, because it it's attached and it's intended to remain there at a fixed place. Okay, now, immovable by incorporation would be the third group of uh, immovables. So, incorporation, so, again, it's like intention and also it's like uh, nature, no? because it is incorporated or attached to okay, another immovable. So, what are these... Um, Immovables by incorporation. Well, under Article 415 of Civil Code, you have the properties listed under Paragraph 1, 2, and 3. So you have the land, buildings, roads, and constructions, all kinds adhered to the soil. Okay, kaya pag sinabi natin immovable property, lagi iisipin mo soil. Okay, 
yung mga slap soil ay sorry hindi pa <laughs> hindi kasama mga slap soil <laughs> okay um tao sila okay hindi sila immovable okay so land buildings roads and constructions of all kinds adhere to the soil so similarly you have trees plants and growing fruits which while they are attached to the land or form an integral part of an immovable and next everything attached to an immovable in a fixed manner in such a way that it cannot be separated therefrom without breaking the material or deterioration of the object okay ang pinagkaiba na incorporation sa destination is that well by nature those things that are attached by destination are really personal properties but then the intention of the owner Hmm, the owner intention of the owner of the property is to attach them to his immovable okay on the other hand uh immovables by incorporation are uh, immovables that uh by nature and by intention they are incorporated or attached to the soil and thus it becomes now very integrated to the soil so that they cannot be removed without damaging one or the other. I mean to say the one that is attached as well as the principal thing, which is the soil. All right. Now, next would be the immovables by analogy. That's paragraph 10. So these are contracts for public works and servitudes and other real rights over immovable property. Okay. Real rights, including mortgage, lease, and uh, or any right that binds third persons, that's a real right. Okay, now, it must be over an immovable because you can also have a mortgage over a uh, personal property like a shuttle mortgage. You can also have lease over uh, a personal property like uh, a lease of a car. Diba? So, kailangan for a right to be considered as a real right and be a uh, for a real right to be considered immovable that real right okay, must be with respect to an immovable as well so a real right meaning to say a right that is registered recorded in the registry of property over a personal property like a shuttle mortgage that is not an immovable all right okay next or take notes take note of the following so first Buildings must be permanent in character, not merely superimposed. Because if it is uh, merely superimposed, then it is uh, it is movable because the intention is to uh, temporarily put it there. Uh, ipinato mo lang doon, tapos mamaya may ililipat mo naman. Why say mamaya may hindi mamaya agad? Meaning to say, after a few uh, days or a few months, depending on the intention of the owner, it will be moved to a different place. So the fact that the intention is to move it from place to place means that it's not immovable because a building should, by by its uh, connotation, immovable means to say permanently attached to the soil. Okay, next, the owner of the building may be different from the owner of the land. So it, is, it doesn't matter if the land, which is immovable by incorporation and by nature, okay, it doesn't matter if that land is owned by another, okay, because... You know, the law doesn't uh, distinguish between a, uh, the land which is owned by another and a property which is owned by another. Okay? Because after all, both real properties or both immovables can be registered. Okay, So they can be registered separately. Next, trees are real properties for as long as they are adhered to the soil. So if they are cut, they are put aside and uh, are, 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 are being loaded or they, are, they wait to be loaded. I mean, do trees wait? Okay, no, they are supposed to be loaded on a truck. Then they now become movables. They are no longer immovables. So trees, to be immovables, they should not be moving at all. So in other words, they should be attached or adhered to the soil. Okay, now rex vinta, which means things attached to an immovable, are immovables if they are attached, okay, take note, in a fixed manner which can be separated from the immovable without breaking the material or causing deterioration of the object. So, <clears throat> for example, there can be some, um, well, let's say, uh, improvements on a building, like um, changing the interiors of the building. Well, I know some offices put up some uh, cubicles, and some of these cubicles are so permanently attached that if you take out these cubicles, then it will destroy the entire floor. So those cubicles, although they started out as movables, 
will not be considered immovables because they are already permanently attached to the immovable. Now, statues, reliefs, or paintings must be placed by the owner okay, of the building with the intention to attach them permanently to the tenements. Okay, so if these statues, reliefs, or paintings were attached by a person other than the owner, like a lessee, for example, uh, and, and without and, and with that lessee retaining his right or his uh, option to, to take it after the expiration of the lease, then that statue, painting, or relief is not considered immovable. Okay. But take note that if the lessee, or if in the contract of lease, uh, the parties agree that anything that is introduced by the lessee will automatically belong to the lessor, then that means the lessee here, when he introduced uh, these improvements uh, in that, uh, building or in the lease premises, that lessee acts now as an agent of the lessor. So even if the it was the lessee who introduced these statues, reliefs, or paintings, they become they are already considered immovable because that lessee is deemed the agent of the owner of the building. All right. Now next, machinery to be considered real must be placed also by the owner or his agent. Okay. So a machinery which is placed by a person not the owner will remain to be um, a movable property even if uh, that uh, machinery is important or included in that building to serve uh, the business or because it's necessary for the industry of the lessee. But because it was introduced by the lessee or uh, placed there by the lessee and not by the owner of the building, so it doesn't become immovable. Next, real rights to be considered real property must be over immovable property, like what I said. No, a real right over a movable, for example, a shuttle mortgage over a car is not immovable. Now, a thing may be considered real or immovable by estoppel, okay? But this treatment does not bind innocent third persons. I'll discuss this estoppel later. No? So just stay there, watch out, okay? Because there's a case on this. So if you want to understand uh, estoppel, as to the classification of real property, just wait till the end. All right, now let's now talk about uh, movable properties, okay, just one M. Now, sometimes you can be uh, confused. Sometimes you may uh, hear it wrong, like immovable, movable. Okay? So when reciting or when um, stating the word, no, so you have to really pronounce immovable. Now, this one just say movable. But sometimes, you know, many of us would still, you know, spell M. So immovable, immovable. So when you say movable, take away the M, just say movable. Okay. Else, okay. <laughs> okay. Si teacher, ano sino ba yun? Basta si teacher, TikTok. The TikTok teacher who's so popular because of her um, voice lesson classes. Okay. Eh, yeah. Kanya kanya niche yan, yan. But uh, I love her. I like I I love watching her TikToks. So she's so funny. El so okay. the manumatic. Or right, anyway, so movable versus immovable. Okay. But you know the best way to avoid the confusion is just say real property versus personal property. Okay. But you know since Article 415 and 416 use immovable and movable, then let's use them, okay? Now, sometimes, just so you will not be confused, gamitin nyo na lang real property for immovable and personal property for movable. All right, so movable properties are, first, movable by exclusion. Di ba, how convenient? Sabi ng batas, pag hindi kasama sa Article 415, ibig sabihin nun, movable siya. Ayan. So, ganun, ka, ganun katali. Lang. I'm not, of course, insulting our uh, drafters. Masama yun. But, uh, it simply means that in this world, okay, we have uh, two types of properties. You have the immovables, which are the specific ones, the special ones, and all the rest are just movables. Ayan. So, kung may, 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 kung, may, kung may feelings to mga movables, I think they will feel offended by that classification. 
Okay, so these are the immovables, and they are specified. They are special. They are described. Okay, kayo na hindi na describe movables lang kayo lahat. Okay, and also uh, movables by description. Okay, and how are they described? It's, they're not described by their what? By their brand? By their by their use? By their um what substantivity instead they are defined by their mobility in other words if the thing can be moved from place to place and can be removed from the real property without impairment of the real property then it is a movable property okay so the challenge now is um how do you distinguish something that is already attached okay to an immovable or usually is uh, found or being used in an immovable property like uh, you know machinery equipment okay uh, how about uh, the fixtures mga sofa mga dining tables and all that are they considered immovable because they are already attached to alam ba pagka winelding mo yung table doon sa sa isang opisina or sa isang building yeah, alam ko may mga nag-welding talaga ng mga mese para hindi nga magalaw. Like some restaurants even screw their chairs and their, I mean, screw as in yung screwdriver. Okay, for an easy yung screw. Okay, no screwing around. <laughs> so, um, some restaurants screw their tables and chairs. <laughs> so, uh, are they now considered immovables? Ayan. So, that's the challenge. So, again, balik lang lagi tayo doon sa um criteria okay for saying that an, that a property is immovable so immovable by nature immovable by destination okay immovable by incorporation and immovable by analogy so if the thing is not by its nature attached to the soil so it doesn't meet the test of immovable by nature if it is not attached by the owner of the immovable to be made permanent part of that immovable then it doesn't meet the the definition or the require or the classification of immovable by destination or intention now if it is not incorporated I mean to say it is not attached to the soil by its nature not by intention but by its nature no um then it is also not an immovable by incorporation. So, is it immovable by analogy? Hindi. Kasi pag sabi ito immovable by analogy, mga incorporeal or intangible properties yun. So, if it's a fixture, like a sofa, a table, movable yun. Kasi hindi naman siya inattached there to be, you know, to be permanently attached to the building because it serves as let's say foundation, hindi eh. it's just for the use of the um, inhabit inhabitants, no residents of the uh, residents of the house. No, kaya um, it really is personal because it can be arranged. No, it can be rearranged, can be transferred. Just because it is a fixed, yeah, mas magandu a fixed case, a screwed. Okay, so if the owner affixes. Or mas maganda yung if the owner screws. Okay, affixes na lang. If the owner affixes the table to the the floor, uh, the purpose of that is at, to make it more permanent and not uh, not moving okay? or not movable. Okay? But it doesn't change its nature that it is movable. Ayan. Okay, so yun yung suggestion ko. I just... Look at the uh, the circumstances. Look at the uh, intention. Uh, well, first, look at the nature of the thing. If it moves from place to place or if it can be moved from place to place. Second is, if there is an intention to affix it in relation to some industry uh, in that immovable or because of some uh, personal desire of the owner to have it fixed there, ayan, so it becomes now an immovable okay, property. All right, so let's have a short test. Okay, so tell me. Well, actually, kitang-kita nyo ni. So how can you tell me? Kitang-kita nyo ni yung sagot. 
Okay, so, immovable or removable. Eh, hindi ko kasi alam pa paano yung transition dito eh. Anong pinipindot para lumabas yan. Eh. Okay, anyway. But mas nga magandang kita-kita nyo yung sagot agad from at the first glance, right? So, description. Sacks of cement in a construction site. Is it immovable or movable? Well, it is movable because the cement are still or is still in the sack. So, it has not yet been mixed or has not yet been used okay, to be attached or incorporated into an immovable. Okay. So, kaya movable pa lang siya kasi nasa sako pa lang siya. Pero pag uh, uh, binuhos na, tapos uh, hinalo with water and then, of course, mixed into or placed into the mold, then it becomes now an immovable okay, by incorporation. Saan din yung makalimutan, no? Sana talaga. Sa bagay, nakalimutan yung ngayon birthday niya. Ito pa kaya. Sa bagay, mas importante ito kasi sa birthday niya. <laughs> Jokes lang. Okay, next. Cement forming the posts of the building. Ayan, o, diba? Kapag kasunod lang. So, if the sacks were now processed and then mixed and then placed or uh, incorporated into the post of the building, then that cement would now be considered immovable okay, by incorporation. Now, how about a printing machine in a printing press? So, a printing press is, of course, it's like a, uh, a factory or an office of print printable products like papers, books, yeah, stationery, envelopes, and all that. So, the printing machine there, although it is by nature movable, but because of the destination or because of the intention of the owner of that building, then uh, the thing becomes now an immovable by destination or by intention. Okay. How about a laptop? Now, a laptop in that printing press, for example, may still be, may also be um, essential to the business in that building, but because it's not attached to the building, but rather by its nature, it can be moved from place to place. Even inside that building, it can be uh, moved from uh, one room to another, into, say, the foyer, foyer <laughs> to the pantry. And so, uh, movable talaga ang laptop. Okay, now, next. Statues placed by the lessee on the least property. Ayan. Diba sabi ko, depende ko sino naglagay ng statue. Okay, so if it's a lessee, meaning to say not the owner, then it's not immovable, but rather it is simply movable. Pero tandaan nyo rin yung exception. The exception is that when based or according to their contract, anything that is placed or introduced by the lessee in that least premises, whether personal or immovable property, assuming pwede nga, uh, will form part of the list premises and will belong to the lessor at the end of the expiration, at the end of the lease, then that means the lessee here acts as an agent of the lessor. Thus, these statues, even though placed by a lessee, are considered immovable because they are deemed to have been placed there by the lessor okay, through the constructive agent, which is the lessee. Okay, next, growing fruits harvested by the farmer. So, According to um, Article 414, fruits to be considered immovable, they should still be attached uh, to the tree. So they should still be considered growing fruits. But if they have already fallen or they have already been harvested, then they are no longer considered growing fruits. Thus, they are no longer immovables. So they are movables when they have already been harvested by the farmer. All right. So, what's the significance or importance of this classification? Ano ba natin, ano ba pakin natin sa immovables, sa kamovables na yan? Uh, if they're all properties, I mean, kung uh, properties, anything that is uh, the subject of appropriation, then both of them are actually subject of appropriation, both immovable and movable. And if these properties are considered generally properties, then the owner thereof uh, has rights protected by the Constitution. So, why make the fuss about the distinctions? Well, 
the significance of the classification can be appreciated in the following. Number one, formalities. So when you say formalities, of course, we refer to the form of the contract. So in your obligations and contracts, you will remember that a contract can be verbal or in writing. Now, some contracts are valid even though verbal, and some contracts require that it should be reduced into writing. Now, the same applies to personal or uh, movables property and uh, immovables and real properties. Okay, so under Article 1358, okay, um, some properties are, or some con or contracts involving real properties, whether it's modification, whether it's uh, transfer of property or, or creation or extinguishment of rights over real property, the same should be in a public instrument. Okay. Now, if it's not in a public instrument, then it cannot be well, proved. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's not for the validity. You know, the requirement, the Supreme Court has very been has been very consistent. You no, know, Article 1350 is not really for uh, validity of the contract. So if it's a sale of real property, it can still be, it can still bind the parties, but then separate, it cannot be proved. And then uh, also uh, Article 1358 on sale of real property is also for the convenience of the parties because you cannot register a sale uh, with the register of deeds unless the sale is reduced in writing. So, yun. but then if it's personal property, there's no requirement of uh, a written instrument, no, because um, ownership usually is acquired by simple possession or um, delivery of a personal property. So he who has possession of a personal or movable property is in fact presumed to be the owner thereof. So kaya hindi na natin kailangan ang written instrument. Okay, pero kung immovable property yan, as provided under Article Four One Five of the Civil Code, then uh, this property or the sale or alienation or encumbrance of these properties must be as a general rule in writing and in fact in a public instrument. Now also registration. Okay. Only real properties are covered by the Torrent system. Okay. So uh, real properties should be registered. No? Uh, and if they are registered, uh, any voluntary or involuntary dealing with these real properties or immovable properties must also be recorded in the registry of property. Now this is not to say, however, that the registry of deeds or the registry of property has nothing to do with personal property. The registry of deeds also records uh, shuttle mortgages. And of course, with the PPSA, on PPSA, Personal Property Security Act, okay, with the Personal Property Security Act, then other personal securities are also reco uh, recorded or registered with the um, registry of deeds. So, yeah. Um, warning, warning ba? Uh, well, advice, uh, kasama po sa bar ang um, PPSA, so aral-aral na po na yung PPSA na yan. Alright, now, um, so personal property generally are not recorded in the registry of deeds or registry of property. Now, how about acquisitive prescription? Okay. Acquisitive prescription also varies uh, between immovable properties and movable properties. Um, we have two types of prescription. We have ordinary prescription and extraordinary prescription, ordinary prescription generally applies to um, possession, adverse possession in good faith. Adverse possession in good faith. Parang hindi ata consistent yun. Kung saan mo adverse kasi, ibig sabihin may alam, alam mo kung sino yung may-ari or sino yung uh, tao na may better right to the property. So, your possession is adverse to his uh, possession or rights. So, sabihin na natin, sorry, uh, so, possession in good faith. Yeah. So, 10 years lang pagka real property. Pagka good faith, it means you have uh, the possessor has no notice or knowledge of any defect in his right okay, to the property. So, hindi niya alam kung sino may ari. Alam niya na siya na ang may ari. Yung mga ganon. So, that's good faith. Now, if that uh, possessor is aware of an adverse claim or uh, is suspecting but he did not uh, make an investigation and verify or authenticate that suspicion, then he would still he would be considered as a possessor in bad faith. So acquisitive prescription, uh, 
extraordinary acquisitive prescription uh, in real property would be 30 years. Now, ang pinagkaiba sa personal property is that in personal property, ordinary prescription would only require four years, but personal or but extraordinary prescription uh, in or involved in personal property would require eight years. Okay? So, mas maiksi. Okay, now, um, well, don't ask me, pero sige, tanungin nyo na lang ako. Anyway, it's unsolicited, pero sige, sabihin ko na lang. Uh, the, the difference is that, of course, with um, real property, it's there. Okay, so um, you have to meet the minimum of 10 years or 30 years to prove to the world that no, that, that that you have sustained it, that you, talagang, alam mo yun, natiis mo, na wala talagang nag-claim ng property other than you. So, by the lapse of that time, it means you have already cemented, yeah, because we're talking about real property, sige, cemented your right to that property. Pero, the period is shorter in personal property because these personal properties or these movables are by their nature movable. They can be transferred from place to place. So, why require the same uh, length of 10 or, or 30 years? Uh, ownership over movables can be easily settled no, within a short period because four years or eight years, that's very you know long. I mean, that's long enough to, to settle any possible question as to ownership of that uh, uh, personal property. The rule, after all, is that he who is in physical possession is presumed to be the owner of a personal property. If there's anyone who claims otherwise, then he should uh, file it ASAP because knowing that that thing can 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 get lost. Diba? So, kaya shorter and period. So, kaya importante yung distinction. Diba? Kasi kung walang distinction, then we would the law would use the same uh, length of time or prescription for both types of properties. I mean, is it, tulong, tulong na, it may not be fair or it, it may not be logical for the same prescriptive period applicable to personal property, I mean to say four or eight years, be made applicable to real properties or immovables, diba? Because they are very different and the dynamics of these properties are very different. At least the human dynamics involving these properties are very different. Okay, next. As to venue to file actions, first, of course, you have to classify the action between personal action or real action. Now, these are different from, I mean, they do not necessarily mean that a personal action is one that involves personal property, but generally, yes, because when you say personal property, the action is only binding against the defendant, okay, but not against the whole world. So the decision in that case is only binding between the parties, but usually because personal property is, or ownership of a personal property is, uh, uh, follows the physical possessor, and uh, because we don't have a mode or system of registration of personal or uh, yeah, personal property, then an action to recover a personal property is usually and still is a personal action. So, kung personal action yan, the venue is okay, the place of either the plaintiff or the defendant at the election of the plaintiff. Kasi personal action yan. Kahit na ang property is in, let's say, in Mindanao, because that's where the defendant is, but and then the plaintiff is in, let's say, in Ilocos, and hindi hindi kailang ifile mo sa Mindanao, uh, like sabi natin do sa lugar ko sa Sambuanga, kaya hindi kailang ifile mo sa Sambuanga kasi nga nandoon yung uh, defendant and nandoon yung um, property. Because this is a personal action, and the plaintiff can choose to file it in his place of residence in Ilocos. Okay, but if it is a real property, then it is clearly a real action because any action or any right or interest over a real property, if prosecuted, usually binds the whole world. No? So that's why um, the action should be filed in the place where the property is located and not where the parties reside. Okay, so kaya ando yung difference no? for personal property or movable or uh, immovable. Okay, next is pagdating naman sa sale on installment. Okay, uh, remember your loan sales. Pagka personal property yan, 
and it was sold on installment, then the applicable law is recto law or Article 1484 of the Civil Code. But if it is a real property sold on installment, then the applicable law is Maceda law. And so we have Republic Act 6552. I mean, kung walang distinction yan, so paano alin nat, alin batas ang gagamitin natin. So that's why it's good that we have distinctions. Now, you have to study and learn this uh, Article 4084 and Republic Act 6552 to better see the difference, no? And the difference is, of course, in the remedies okay, or the rights and obligations of the parties. Next is double sale. So under Article 1544, you will immediately see the difference or the distinction between movables and immovables. If it's a double sale of movables, the preference is given to the first buyer who is in possession in good faith. So possession and preference. But in uh, real property or immovable, uh, it is the first person or first buyer uh, who registers the sale in good faith. So registration and preference basta immovable. Now, of course, if the property is immovable, uh, sorry, if the property is unregistered immovable, then you don't uh, insist on registration kasi hindi nga naman siya registered. So it's the first buyer who is in possession of that unregistered immovable okay, who will be preferred. Now, of course, you have local taxation. We know that when this is a local taxation, only real property is subject to real property taxes, not in personal property taxation. All right. Okay, now let's look at the case of search products versus PCI leasing, GR number 137705, August 22, 2000. Okay, Indian 2400. I think this is 2000. Okay, anyway, check nyo na lang, 137705. You can check that out in Google or in lawful.net or even at the website of the Supreme Court. Okay, now this is the case involving, you sabi okay na na, classification of property by estoppel. Okay. So, estoppel is, of course, a condition whereby a person who does an act or makes a representation um, will be prevented or will not be allowed okay, to change his earlier representation or his earlier acts because that would, of course, uh, prejudice third persons or that would be against the law or public policy. Okay, so what are the facts of the case? So, Respondent PCI Leasing and Finance Incorporated filed with the RTC QC a complaint for a sum of money with an application for a writ of replevin against surge products. Now, Respondent Judge issued a writ of replevin which the Sheriff sought to implement by seizing machinery in surge factory. Okay. Now, surge opposed the writ claiming that the properties were real properties and cannot be the subject of replevin. Okay. Now, again, tatandaan na, tandaan nyo yung art, Article 415. So, if the uh, machinery is placed in the building by the owner or by the lessee with the consent of the owner or with the agreement that the owner acquires the said machinery, okay? Basta may ganun, ano? And also, the purpose is for the or to serve uh, to be used for the works or the industry related or for which the building was used okay then that would become real property okay now the question is whether the machinery were real property but by virtue of immobilization in other words immovable by destination or intention so according to the supreme court no while the machines that were the subject of the seizure were real property by destination because they were placed by the petitioners in their factory built on their own land, the court held that the contracting parties may validly stipulate that a real property be considered as personal property. After agreeing to such stipulation, they are consequently stopped from claiming otherwise. Under the principle of estoppel, a party to a contract is precluded from denying the truth of any material fact found therein. All right. Now, if you will be asked uh, what are the different types of immobilization, you need to say uh, when an immovable, when, when a thing becomes immovable. So, nasabi na nga natin, no? Im Im immovable by nature, immovable by destination, immovable by incorporation, and immovable by analogy. 
isamin nyo ni Estopel. But because Estopel is a remedy in equity and not really a remedy in law, then it must be strictly applied or strictly construed and must be applied only in situations that exactly call for it. So kung halimbawa wala namang stipulation talaga no, in their agreement na the, the machinery would be considered as real property or personal property, then there is no estoppel. Okay? Uh, so kakailangan talaga malinaw no, na there was really an agreement, an act, or a representation uh, which made the other party agree to it. No? Like in this case, syempre may agreement, so both of them agreed to it because both of them undertook to consider the machinery as personal property. So kaya it would prejudice the other party if the other party to that contract would, you know, uh, just turn his back to that agreement. So kaya may stop na sila. Alright, so that's the case of surge. Okay, now next, let's look at the different properties by private ownership and by public ownership or public dominion. So the properties of private ownership or properties considered to be private properties are patrimonial property of the state and property belonging to private persons either individually or collectively. So patrimonial property are those properties belonging to the state but in the private capacity of the state. So can a state be, I mean, can the state have a private capacity? I mean, the state is, of course, the, the public domain. You know, so everything in the public domain belongs to the state or refers to the state. So how can the state be, or how can the state have a private capacity? Well, the state okay, uh, acquires private capacity or exercises its private capacity when it enters into contracts with private individuals. Okay? Or even in, in entering into contracts with uh, other public entities like uh, other states. No? Yan, so these are public entities. Or even uh, entering into uh, contracts with um, other public corporations, like local government units. But if the contract is private in nature and not for some public service, then uh, that is a contract in the private capacity of the state. So any property that is the subject of these juridical relations in the private capacity of the state are considered patrimonial properties. So kasama na dyan yung mga public markets which are being rented out to private individuals. What else? Uh, commercial well, government buildings which are being used for commercial purposes, those are also uh, uh, patrimonial properties. Also, uh, lands which are being uh, used or are being allocated to private individuals under the housing program of the state, then those are also patrimonial properties. Now, of course, the easier to see or easier to identify are the private properties or the properties belonging to private persons. Now, usually they are registered. If they are registered, then there is, of course, a transfer or an original uh, certificate of title in the name of these private individuals. Of course, this means that these private individuals have already acquired these properties from the state. Okay, so if you want to know more about how a private individual can acquire property belonging to the state, I suggest that you uh, study uh, the topic or the subject of land titles and deeds. Now, who knows? Maybe in the future, I would uh, make a video on LTD. Okay. Uh, pero hindi pa siya kasama dito sa property. Ha? Ibang subject po siya. Okay. But I lecture on LTD in the Bar Review Centers. And so last month, March, I think it was March 24, March 28, I, I uh, lectured on the topic of land titles and deeds with or before the Villasis Law Center. And also the previous month, sa PUP Bar Review Center naman. And then, of course, I also lectured on that uh, at uh, Legal Edge. Ayan. So, ayan po yung... Pero, sige, I mean, bakit ko naman iiwan yung aking mga, um, mga estudyante? Yeah. Because right now, if you're watching this video, I would treat you like my student. Na. So, syempre, hindi ko kayo pababayaan. Pero unahin mo natin itong mga more... Uh, the, 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 the more principal topics no, on property. All right. Now, what are the properties 
of the public domain and these are the public properties now i mean for for easier understanding so these are the properties now instead of the the civil code identifying these or classifying these according to their characteristics or nature like how the constitution um described or identified the uh, properties of the public domain of course if you remember the constitution for no no you have forest lands timber lands mineral lands national parks ganyan. so dito sa civil code instead of identifying these properties according to their nature characteristics or topography if you will uh, here ang purpose ang test no so if the property is for public use public service and for the development of the national wealth then that property is a property of public dominion okay so what are these properties let me check uh, ito na pala. So, okay, let's first check these characteristics of properties of public dominion and how or why they are called properties of the public dominion so first they cannot be alienated or leased or otherwise be the subject matter of contracts because if that property um, is the subject of uh, lease or is being alienated by the state or by an LGU or by an agency of the government then that means that property has already become patrimonial property so private property na siya, hindi siya public property so if hindi siya pwede alienate hindi siya pwede lease then that means the property is still public property now also they cannot be acquired by prescription against the state so kung public property yan hindi po pwedeng gamitin yung acquisitive prescription na 10 years or 30 years na sinabi ko kayo na okay also they cannot be the subject to attachment or execution because they are of course properties belonging to the state so no attachment or execution can be uh, attached or can be uh, uh, executed or can be raised against the state now also they're exempt from real estate taxes and can't be sold at public auction and they cannot be burdened by any voluntary easement so yan yung mga uh, qualifications or characteristics of properties of the public dominion okay now, interestingly, here is the case of heirs of Malabanan and the requirement for conversion. So, sinabi natin kanina, okay, take note, the second uh, note that I placed here, that properties um, of the public dominion cannot be acquired by prescription against the state because these properties belong to the state okay, forever and ever. Unless, sabi na Supreme Court dito si heirs of Malabanan, unless they have already been reclassified so if they have already been reclassified there must be to say they have been converted as patrimonial property then there must be a positive act okay on the part of congress or by the president okay declaring the said property as patrimonial property and that it is no longer reserved for public use public service and for the development of the national wealth so ito ngayon ta ang tanong so ano ba yung mga properties that are for public use public service and for the development of the national wealth so pag public use yan yan yung mga ginagamit talaga on a regular and a daily basis so you have the streets uh, the roads uh, what uh, water uh, sources kaya water lines ganyan uh, mga utilities ganyan now, pagka public service naman, so these are the needed basic services like schools, um, hospitals, uh, government buildings, kanya. Now, for the development of the national wealth, these are properties that uh, help uh, increase uh, the economy or improve the economy of the state. So, for example, yung mga dagat mo, yung mga bukid mo, kanya, yung mga bundok mo, yung mga mineral lands mo. Those are properties needed for the development of the national wealth. So, if they remain as such, then they cannot be acquired by prescription. Dapat ma-reclassify muna at ma-convert into a patrimonial property that is no longer used or reserved for public use, public service, and for the development of the national wealth. Okay, so that is the end of this video on the basic concepts of property. So, if you will recall, we discussed natin yung definition of property, characteristics of property, the types of property, mean to say, as divided into 
consumable, non consumable, tangible, intangible, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. And also, of course, the uh, classification of property into immovable and movable. And also, you know, properties when they're classified as private properties and public properties or properties of the public dominion. All right, so I hope uh, this is a uh, more than sufficient background or introduction to property. Um, take note of my next topic, which would be ownership. Siguro pagsasamahin na natin ang ownership, accession, and co-ownership. Who knows, no? Siyempre, uh, depende yan. Kailangan, ano yan, cohesive at saka um, organize yung ating topic no, para hindi masyadong magulo at saka, siyempre, uh, madaling intindihin yung mga topics. Alright, so I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video and for sticking. And I'm sure it's been quite a long video, no? Pero ganun talaga. Okay, there's no shortcut in law. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Support mo naman tong channel ko, ganyan. I mean, there's really not much to do here. You're not paying me to make these videos, right? So the least you can do is subscribe and let's learn the law together. So click nyo na yung notification bell para naman pagka may bago akong video, nalalaman nyo agad tapos napapanood nyo agad. Ayan, so that's it from me. I'll see you in my next video. Laging tatandaan, isip ay buksan, alamin ang batas.